You're listening to a lecture by the St. Jerome Center for Catechesis, a Catholic website dedicated to providing Catholics and non-Catholics with material about the Catholic faith. In this segment on the Patristic series, we will examine the life of St. Polycarp. Well, thank you for listening. This is Michael Lofton with the St. Jerome Center for Catechesis. We're going to go over St. Polycarp today, who was a very important early church father. He lived approximately from 69 AD until around 156 AD. He was the Bishop of Smyrna, and he was especially known for being a disciple of the Apostle John himself. He actually sat at the feet of the Apostle John. Now, much of what we know about this saint comes from the account of his martyrdom um, in a document entitled Martyrdom of St. Polycarp, written around 155 or 157 AD, uh, depending on the time of his martyrdom. If you have never read this document before, do not let another day go by. Read it immediately. It is the most beautiful account you will ever read of an individual laying down their life for Christ. It is absolutely phenomenal, and it will inspire you to live a life of fidelity to Christ uh, more than most other uh, readings out there. So please read The Martyrdom of St. Polycarp, and I will include a link to it at the bottom of, uh, at the bottom of this page. Now, we have a letter actually written by St. Polycarp. It was a letter to the Philippians, the very same Philippian church that the Apostle Paul wrote to. Um, it's not a very lengthy letter, but it's all that we have. We do, however, have a letter that was written by St. Ignatius of Antioch to Polycarp, which gives us um, further insight into Polycarp himself. Now, there's some noteworthy teachings uh, that I wanted to go over when it comes to the letter to the Philippians by St. Polycarp, and I also wanted to briefly go over uh, their significance. For example, in the letter to the Philippians, St. Polycarp testifies concerning the Apostle Paul the following. He says, when he, that is Paul, was among you face to face with the men of that time, he expounded the word of truth accurately and authoritatively. Now, this is significant because it's a very early affirmation that St. Paul was reliable in his teachings and also in his writings. And so um, there are a number of individuals out there today, um, some modern scholars who want to cast doubt on the writings of the Apostle Paul. So this is a good early refutation of that approach to Paul. Now, St. Polycarp also testifies to the necessity of obeying the clergy, that is, our bishops, priests, and deacons, and to do so as one would obey Christ himself. Polycarp says, Wherefore it is needful to abstain from all these things, being subject to the presbyters and deacons, as unto God and Christ. And this is very important, especially for those Protestants who have, um, through their founders, separated from the presbyters and the bishops that um, Christ has installed uh, by his apostles through apostolic succession. To disobey them and to dissent from them is to disobey Christ, just as to obey them is to obey Christ. So this is very noteworthy uh, for our Protestant listeners. And of course, it's also significant because it shows how one is to view those who have received the sacrament of holy orders. They have a very lofty uh, position, and we should treat them as such. <clears throat> now, St. Polycarp is also noteworthy for his insistence that the faithful should stay away from false Christians. As he said, Let us be zealous in the pursuit of that which is good, keeping ourselves from causes of offense, from false brethren, and from those who in hypocrisy bear the name of the Lord, and draw away vain men into error. This is, of course, very apropos to today, given the lax attitude that so many have towards heresy, as well as those who teach, uh, well, obstinately teach heresy. Um, St. Polycarp says we need to have nothing to do with them. Now, Polycarp is also noteworthy because he makes use of the Deuterocanonicals. Those are the seven extra books that the Protestants do not have in their Bibles, which they actually removed from sacred scripture. He says of the book of Tobit, which is one of the Deuterocanonicals, 
When you can do good, defer it not, because alms delivers from death. Here he's actually quoting from Tobit 4.10 and Tobit 12.9. So he makes use of Tobit just as he does the rest of sacred scripture. This is very, very important because it demonstrates that the Deuterocanonicals were considered to be part of sacred scripture by Christians as early as the 2nd century A.D. Now, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on St. Polycarp and look forward to the next one on St. Ignatius of Antioch. Thank you for listening to this lesson in the Patristic series. If you would like more information about the St. Jerome Center for Catechesis, please visit stjeromecenter.com.